The Galaxy S24 delivers some of the strongest value of Samsung's latest flagships, offering the same Galaxy AI features as its pricier counterparts. But the real benefit to upgrade is to reap the performance and battery life improvements delivered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 Silicon, assuming that you are able to buy a phone with that chip where you live. I have mentioned the Galaxy S24's larger display which offers a resolution of 2340 by 1080 resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate. But besides the modest increase in size from the 6.1 inch panel on the S23, the biggest addition is a boost to the screen's brightness. Like the rest of the new lineup, the Galaxy S24 promises a maximum brightness of 2600 nits. I have to say our lab testing didn't come close to the theoretical maximum which was probably achieved under very controlled circumstances. Still, the 1416 nits it reaches using a light meter and with HDR enabled is nothing to sneeze it. It improves upon the Galaxy S23's 1340 nit reading and was in line with the iPhone 15's 1400 nit result. I found I had to keep the display brightness slider rather high to see the screen details under less favorable lighting conditions, but at least the S24 has the capability in its toolkit. A trailer for the Ministry of Our Gentlemanly Warfare on YouTube looked pretty dark in some scenes, though I suspect that's a Guy Ritchie problem and not a Samsung one. Streaming under pressure on Netflix produced bright crisp images of the US women's soccer team in action. The Galaxy S24 recreates more colors than the iPhone 15's display does using both the sRGB and DCI-P3 spectrums. Apple's screen is a bit more accurate too, with a Delta E rating of 0.18 to the S24's 0.22 with the display in its default vivid mode. In terms of camera hardware, Samsung hasn't really touched a thing for this Galaxy S24 update. The 50MP main camera, 12MP ultra-wide shooter and 10MP telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom are exactly what you would find on the Galaxy S23. Even aperture and sensor sizes remain the same. In one sense, that shouldn't matter as the Galaxy S23 was already one of the best camera phones, so you'd imagine that the Galaxy S24 should be just fine on the camera front. And that's before we get to some of the AI enhanced features Samsung has added to the S24 lineup. The trouble is Samsung's competitors have not stood still since last year. Now you can guys see some photo sample of Galaxy S24 and some comparison between S23 and S24 and iPhone 15.
if the Galaxy S24 phone had performed just a shade or two better against the iPhone 15, I would have declared this model as the entry-level flagship phone to get. As it stands, this is still one of the best base model Galaxy S phones I have ever used, delivering a lot of value for $800. US While the AI features are welcome additions, they are only part of what makes the Galaxy S24 so impressive. It's the bigger, brighter skin, longer-lasting battery, and stellar performance that make the phone device well worth getting with Galaxy AI a nice add-on. Because the cameras haven't changed that much, I don't think anyone with last year's Galaxy flagship needs to concern themselves with upgrading. And perhaps even Galaxy S22 users can get one more year out of their device. Anyone with an older Galaxy flagship should run not work to their nearest retailer to, to grab this new model. Perhaps the most impressive thing about the Galaxy S24 is the serious lack of FOMO you'll have if you opt for this phone over one of the more expensive models. Yes, the Galaxy S24 Ultra has the more impressive camera setup, but with the same Galaxy AI features and battery and performance improvements of its own, the Galaxy S24 is a worthwhile flagship in its own right. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.